Greetings in the matchless name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome once again to our Sunday program, Morning Glory. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, before we go to the word of the Lord, I would like us to first start with prayer. My Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, here we are once again. O oh Lord, we plead for your mercies. We ask, O oh Jehovah, for your grace. Even this morning, my master will celebrate the sufficiency of your grace. You said in your word, your grace is sufficient for us. Father, we tap into your grace even this morning. I pray that, Lord, you load upon my life grace upon grace. I pray, Lord God, that, Father, as I'm about to speak the word, that, Lord, I may divinely articulate your word, that, Lord God, I may speak your word without erring. I pray, Holy Spirit, for your guidance. I pray, Holy Spirit, for your leadership. I pray that you enable me to speak the word of God with power and absolute authority. It is my prayer. I humble myself, O oh God, under your mighty hand of glory. And Father, I pray, I decline the table of honor as you incline it. I decrease as you increase. Father, speak to us, speak to our lives. We are here, O oh Jehovah, to hear from you. We are here, O oh God, seeking your face. And Father God, we are desperate to hear your word. May your word, O oh God, make a mark that no one and no man can ever erase in our lives. May your word, O oh God, totally transform our lives even today. You said in your word in the book of Psalm 107, you have sent your word to heal and deliver. I pray that, Lord God, your word may heal and deliver. I pray that, Jehovah, that, Lord, you may... You, you, the anointing of teaching may rest upon my life as I'm about to teach your word. And Lord, I thank you for your grace that flows unceasingly and your grace that flows effortlessly through my life and through my ministry. Speak, O oh God, we are listening. We give you honor, we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless you. Amen and amen. Now, let's go straight to the word of the Lord this morning. And I believe that um, you, you, you are kept by the grace of God. And I know that all is well with your life. Because as long as God is on the throne, all is well. Amen. So, today I want to talk on the subject of faith, the essence of our spirituality. Faith, the essence or the essence of our spirituality. Now, when we, when we talk about or when we define the word essence, it is the intrinsic nature you know of something or it is the the, the the indispensable quality of something that's what an essence is so faith is the essence of our total spirituality now essence is that which determines the character of something so faith determines the character of our relationship with God now since essence is the intrinsic nature of something the intrinsic quality of Christianity is faith now faith is the nature of our Christian life faith is the nature of our Christian life and our total walk with God is governed and it is regulated you know by faith that is why the Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith that we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 6 may we read it the Bible says but without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seeking now for example uh, in the past few Sundays we spoke on the subject of prayer um, and this 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 these past Sundays now prayer of faith is not another kind or another type of prayer remember we spoke about three four Sundays on prayer so prayer of faith I, I, I would normally hear people uh, talking about prayer of faith as another kind of prayer or another type of prayer it is not prayer of faith is not another kind of prayer I mean of, of yes of prayer but 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 um, uh, when we talk about prayer of faith faith is an essence of prayer without faith prayer is not prayer so meaning that our prayers must be characterized by faith in other words faith is what makes a prayer a prayer so a, any prayer without faith is not prayer any prayer without faith becomes a recitation so faith is the essence of our prayer in other words there is no prayer that 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 would that could successfully emanate to God or that could successfully reach God without it being mixed with faith so faith is an essence of our prayer so is uh, uh, with our Christianity or our spirituality as a whole it is faith is is not a component of our Christianity but is an essence it is a bedrock 
rock of our Christianity. In other words, you can never make it without faith. You can never please God without faith. There are quite a number of things that you cannot be able to do without faith. Now, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 14, verse number 23, and I'm reading it, Romans 14, 23, the Bible says, whatever is not from faith is sin. Whatever is not from faith is sin. Now, any prayer that is offered without faith counts for nothing. Whatever is not from faith is sin. So when you pray without attaching faith to your prayer, that prayer counts for nothing. No matter how 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 how, how tired you can be physically after you've prayed, but that prayer will account for nothing or will count for nothing. No matter how how, how beautiful how much uh, the words you have used, or no matter how beautifully you know uh, decorative the words are when you pray, but any prayer that is without faith counts for nothing. For the Bible says whatever is not from faith that includes prayer it includes our acts our actions as well so that which is that which is not from prayer the Bible says is sin it does not even say it's wrong but the Bible says it is sin so any prayer that is offered without without a uh, uh, faith that prayer will count for nothing Praying without faith is, 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 is simply playing without knowing. So we can pray from head, but never in head. But we must always pray in faith. We can pray from head, but never pray in head. We must always pray in faith as people of God. When you pray in head, you will head more. When you pray in faith, you will grow in spiritual confidence. Every time you pray in faith, your spiritual confidence grows. Every time you pray in faith, you, in faith, your, your, your confidence in God, your confidence in God's ability will grow. That is how your faith grow when you pray in faith. But when you pray in head, you will hurt more. It will not make the situation any better for you. Now, further, furthermore, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 2. Little by Billy, uh, I'm reading Hebrews 4, verse number 2. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Now, let me repeat. The word they have heard. Now, now the Bible here talks about preaching to the, uh, the, 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 the... These are the believers of Hebrews. They are referring to the word being, having been preached to them. So they said, but the word which they, which they heard as the word was preached, the word which they heard did not profit them they all had the same thing and but the word that they heard did not profit them they heard like others would hear the word when the word is preached but this 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 group in particular when they heard the word in the book of hebrews the, the, the believers in hebrews when they heard the word the bible says the word that they heard did not profit them why the bible further says not being mixed with faith in those who had it so anything not mixed with faith is tantamount to nothing no matter how hard the word can be preached no matter how attentive you can listen to the word of the lord no matter how con how, how how much you can concentrate to the word as it is being preached but if it is not mixed with faith that word is tantamount to nothing it will not help anyone the bible says they had the word but that word did not profit them that word did not profit them now without faith nothing becomes profitable without faith nothing becomes profitable they had the word but that word was not mixed with faith as a result it did not profit them without faith you know uh, nothing becomes profitable or nothing can profit without faith without faith there can be no tangible results there can be no tangible results they heard the word of god but that word was not mixed with faith it was not mixed with faith it was not mixed with faith that Therefore, it became unprofitable to it did not profit them so when you listen to the word of the Lord you need to be in the mode of faith they listened to the word but they were not in the mode of faith they did not receive the word in faith as a result they could 
could not see the tangible results. They could not see any profit in their lives because the word as they listened to it, you know, they did not mix it with faith. They did not have faith. You know, they did not receive it in faith because when the word is preached, when you receive it, you have to receive it in faith because faith is the essence of our spirituality. Faith governs our total Christianity. If you don't have faith, that word will not profit you. I've sent my word to heal and deliver. According to the book of Isaiah, the word that is sent, it shall surely accomplish the assignment that he sent it for. He will That, that word shall accomplish the assignment. So, I will be in faith or receiving a panda with faith. That word will not be able to accomplish the assignment. So the Bible says that, that they, 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 when they were listening to the word of the Lord, they, 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 did, they did not receive the word of God, you know, and, uh, uh, in faith. They did not receive the word of God with that great anticipation. Now, having not, you know, uh, having not uh, had faith to receive the word of God, the Bible says it profited them not. It profited them not. So without faith, there can never be any tangible results because it is faith that regulates and governs our Christianity. Now again, O Jesus Christ, we see Christ in the book of Mark chapter 6. We see Christ going to his hometown in Nazareth to preach the gospel. That is where Jesus Christ was known. That is where Jesus Christ grew. And the Bible says when he reached that place, he began to preach the word of God. In verse number 5 in particular, the Bible says, now Jesus Christ could do no mighty work there. In verse number 6, the Bible says, it is because of their unbelief. So because they did not believe the word, because they did not have a they did not have a faith attitude or they were not in a faith mode, the word that Jesus preached could not help them. The word that Jesus preached could not make a solid positive impact in their lives. The Bible says he could do no mighty works. We know that wherever Jesus will go, there will always be mighty works. There will always be miracles. So the ministry of Jesus did not did not um, uh, uh, manifest those miracles, not because Jesus could not, but the environment failed him. So where there is faithlessness, that is the that is the, the environment that is not pro miracle. That is the environment that does not and uh, that will not you know uh, have the word profit you know the people in that environment so jesus could not do mighty works there because the people were in unbelief so um, we are stifling God's power, you know, from manifesting. We are stifling the miracles from occurring. Um, a call. So Jesus could not do mighty works then because they did not have faith. Faith indeed is a bedrock of our Christianity and of our spirituality. It is faith that regulates and governs our spirituality as people of God. So Jesus could not do mighty works there because of unbelief. So your spiritual profitability is a, is a consequence of your faith. If you want to be pro productive spiritually if you want to be profitable spiritually you need to be in a faith mode at all times as a child of god faith is our spiritual master key you know it works everywhere and and it works anywhere that's what faith does it doesn't matter your geographical location it doesn't matter the color of your skin it doesn't matter who you are and where you are, where you are coming from but faith when we have faith as people of god faith becomes our spiritual master key a master key is a key that is not limited to open, you know, uh, places. It is not limited to opening doors. It, it, it opens any door. So faith is the key that can open any door in your life as a child of God. Faith works in every area and faith, faith works in every area of your spirituality and faith works in every place and everywhere and every time. It works because faith is a master key. Faith moves God and faith changes things because faith is a master when we read the Bible in the book of Mark chapter 5, we see a woman who had an, who had an issue of blood for, for over 12 years. The Bible says she was bleeding, you know, she was bleeding unstoppably. And, and, and the Bible says she saw Jesus, and she heard about Jesus, and she went to Jesus. Now, Jesus, Jesus had crowds around him.
him. There were so many people, multitudes and multitudes of people were thronging to Jesus. Now the Bible says the women saw the multitude, but she, she refused for the multitude to be a stumbling block to her. And the Bible says she pushed her way through and she reached the hem of the garment of Jesus. She never called for the attention of Jesus, but she reached the hem of the, of the garment of Jesus because the Bible says she said in herself, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I know that I'll be made well. I know that I'll be healed. And the Bible said, showed him, she, she went ahead and she touched the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says immediately she felt she was dry. The fountain stopped. The bleeding stopped. There was a cut in the bleeding and the bible says she never even said jesus i'm here she never even she, she never even made any noise you know nobody you know nobody cared for her nobody paid attention you know to her but the bible says after she had just touched she did not touch jesus but she touched the hem of his garment now the hem was far away from the body of jesus you know there was no way that jesus could have felt the touch of the woman but jesus did not feel the touch he, he instead felt the faith touch of the woman the woman did not only touch jesus with her hand but the woman touched jesus with her heart because she had faith that's what faith does faith can move god and the bible says after 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 the woman touched jesus jesus stopped jesus did not stop because the woman said he must stop but jesus stopped because the bible says he felt the power coming out of him why did he feel the power she was moved by the faith of this woman so faith can move god and faith can change situations the situation of this woman who had suffered for 12 years changed and turned around immediately because of her act of faith. So faith is powerful. Faith is the essence of your Christianity and the essence of your spirituality. Without faith, you cannot do anything. Without faith, you cannot make any spiritual progress. You cannot make any spiritual advancement. Without faith, your prayer becomes a recitation. Without faith, your prayer just becomes a nuisance and it becomes a noisy you know a, a noisy thing before God so we need to have faith when we pray we need to pray in faith when we come to God we need to come to God in faith we need to learn to act in faith and to be people of faith so faith can move God Jesus stopped and he stood still and he said who touched me and and the disciples were confused by this question and they said but Jesus there are so many people touching you left right and center and why can you ask such a question and Jesus says but I I, I felt and I sensed a peculiar touch they there is a peculiar and a unique touch that I felt. That was the touch of faith. So every time we are in faith, God feels our faith. Our faith can move God. Our faith can move God in a deeper way and in a, in a way that we can never imagine. So Jesus was moved and touched by the faith of this woman. It is critical that we move in faith. It is critical that we walk by faith as people of God. Again, going back to that, to the, to that verse in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse number six but without faith so says the bible it is impossible to please god for he who comes to god must believe that god is i want to stop there he who comes to god must believe that god is he who comes to God, you can either it can either refer to someone who comes to God for the first time at salvation. He whoever comes to God, whoever comes to God, you know, to petition God, whoever whoever comes to God to pray to God, whoever approaches God, whoever approaches God, it doesn't matter regardless of your request, regardless of your act after approaching God. But the Bible says, he who comes to God must must believe. So faith is a must; it is not an option. Whoever comes to God must believe that God is. So what does that mean? Faith is therefore our basis of approaching God. Whoever comes to God must believe that God is, must believe that he is, or must believe that he exists. So faith is our basis of approaching God. You cannot approach God without faith. You cannot please God without faith. You cannot pray to God without faith. You cannot do anything in God without faith. That makes faith the most sense you know um, um, of our, our our spirituality the only way to know god i mean the only way to know god exists is only if you believe the bible says he 
he who comes to, to God must believe that God exists, must believe that God exists. So the only way to know God exists as a believer is only if you believe that God exists. For you cannot see God to know he exists. You need to believe that he exists. You cannot see him to know that he, he exists. But you need, to be, you need to believe to know that God exists. The Bible says those who come to God must believe that he is. You know, having not seen him, they must believe. That is faith. That is nothing. So faith is so central, you know, in our spirituality as people of God. That is why if we are not in faith, the Bible says anything that's without faith is sin. God considers anything you do outside faith. God considers it to be sinful. That is how critical faith is to us. Even when you pray earnestly and you pray, you know, um, 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 a deeper, but if you don't have faith, God says that sin because it is done outside faith. So he who comes to God must believe that God is or must believe that God exists and you cannot see God but you need to believe that God exists you can only see his works but you can never see him work let me repeat you can only see God's work but you can never see him work you can only see his works but you can never see him works so as human beings there is something that is so difficult with us as human beings who are in touch with or we are in touch with the world you know uh, we find it very very hard you know to relate with anything that is beyond our five senses it is so difficult for most of us to relate with anything that is beyond our five our, our, our five senses or our normal five senses that is why faith i believe is a sixth sense you know that god grants us at salvation every every child of god that receives christ at salvation you are all apportioned a measure of faith so faith becomes a sixth sense so faith is not only what we know you know but faith is also a sixth sense that we possess as people of god every human being that lives on the earth has got five senses so as people of faith when we begin to operate in faith when we begin to be in the mode of faith faith becomes our sixth sense that we adopt as people of god you know the bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse number three the bible says god has dealt to each one a measure of faith god has dealt to each one a measure of faith at salvation we are given you know a measure of faith is dealt you know and uh, uh, to each and every one of us we have faith when we receive christ jesus we do that as an act it's an act of faith when we receive Christ. so every human being has a measure of faith given to them that is why we are able to come to christ because we exercise our faith we receive christ we don't know we receive christ we have not seen with our with our naked eyes we receive christ we have not been in touch with with our normal five senses so already by the time we receive christ we are already you know a uh, practicing faith so god has dealt to each and every one of us a measure of faith there's a measure of faith that i have there's a measure of faith that you have you know that is why i believe that faith is a sixth sense because without the sense of faith god can never make sense to you as a child of god so you need to have a sense of faith beyond the five senses that you have until you have the sense of faith god will never make sense to you as a child of god faith is our only means of receiving from god that is why we need to be people of faith because faith is the without faith there is nothing you can receive from god without faith there is nothing you can receive from god it is our only means of receiving from God. Let me read the Bible in the book of James chapter 1 verse number 5 to 7 and the Bible reads as follows if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask of God who will give to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him verse number six but let him ask in faith let him ask in faith that is a spiritual attitude that we need to have at all times let him ask but let him ask in faith let him pray but you must pray in faith we must pray in faith but let him ask 
in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind listen to verse number seven for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the lord let not that man who does not have faith suppose that he will receive anything from the lord so faith is our only means of receiving from god when you are without faith you cannot receive from god no matter how no matter how much you shout in prayer no matter how many times you can declare but if you don't have faith the bible says you can receive nothing from god expect nothing because you don't have faith so the bible says let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the lord because you don't have faith so faith is our only means of connecting with god it is not only our only means of receiving from god but faith also is our our means of of connecting with God. We, we can only access God by faith. Without faith, you don't have access. Without faith, you, you are denied access. You cannot access God without faith. So faith is also our means of connecting with God or of connecting to God. You cannot access God without faith. And I have a biblical proof or biblical, you know, a, a, a scriptural proof, you know, um, uh, with, with regards to what I've just said now. You cannot access God without faith. When we read the book of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 12, the Bible says in Christ we have boldness and access with confidence through faith. In Christ we have boldness and we have access with confidence through faith. So we can access God with confidence only through faith. So you can be denied access if you don't operate in faith. If you don't operate in faith, access is denied. You cannot access God. You cannot receive from God. So faith helps us access God. Faith helps us receive from God. Faith helps us access God. Faith helps us receive from God. That that makes faith the essence of our spirituality without faith we cannot you know live our lives fully in Christ without faith we cannot have a solid relationship with God without faith we cannot have a fruitful prayer life now another thing about faith faith I believe faith is the only language you know God speaks and the only language that God understands that's what faith is the only language that God speaks God never speaks other language other than faith and God never understand any language other than faith you know that is the only language that God speaks when we read the Bible in the book book of luke chapter 8 and mark chapter 4 we see jesus with the disciples jesus said to them let us go over and cross over to the other side and the bible says they entered or they entered into the boat and as they were they were they were traveling on that boat in the middle of 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 of, of their journey the bible says there there arose a a great storm and a boisterous wind and the bible says that the, the the boat began to shake and the, and jesus was asleep in the stern and on a pillow inside the, the, the boat while there was a shaking of the boat and the Bible says the disciples stood up and they began to cry and they began to 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 act in panic and they said Jesus why are, why are you leaving us to die and Jesus and Jesus stood up the Bible says he stood up and he, he rebuked the wind and he rebuked the storm and there was silence but Jesus did not only do that but Jesus asked them a question and he said to them where is your faith in, in, in more than one place you we see Jesus talking to people about faith where is your your faith where is your faith where is your faith where is your faith you know why because faith is the only language God speaks faith is the only language that God understands so Jesus will ask from time to time where is your faith Jesus will expect people to use their faith to employ their faith especially in impossible situations so as a child of God I want to encourage you learn to employ your faith when you pray learn to employ your faith on your daily life or as you walk with God on a day on a daily on a, on a on, on, on a daily on a daily um, uh, uh, routine learn to exercise your faith learn to practice your faith learn to speak in faith learn to declare in faith learn to pray in faith anything without faith the Bible calls it sin no matter how 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 sincere you are no matter how earnest you do that thing but anything that you do without faith the Bible considers is sin so it becomes a waste of time and a waste of energy we 
need to be people of faith because faith is a bedrock of our salvation. Faith is, you know, an essence of our spirituality and of our Christian life. So Jesus will ask them, where's your faith? Where's your faith? And every time people will seek healing and go to Jesus, Jesus will always say to them, your faith has made you well. The same woman that I referred to in the book of Mark chapter 5, you know, after she received her healing, after Jesus noticed that this is the woman who took power from him, Jesus said to her, your faith. Jesus did not say, my faith is Jesus, but Jesus says, your faith. Jesus did not say God's faith, but Jesus says, your faith has made you well. That that makes faith a critical, you know, um, a critical essence of our Christianity and of our spirituality. It is your faith that has made you well. When Bartimaeus wanted to see, after he received his sight, Jesus said to him, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. So, child of God, I encourage us. We need to exercise our faith. Everything we do in the Lord, we must do it in faith. And we must do it with our attitude, you know, a, a faith attitude. We must do it with, with that faith disposition. Everything we do that we do if we do it without faith that is you know that amounts to sin to god does not consider us even if even when you pray if we pray without without faith god does not consider it so Jesus will tell them, your faith has made you well. And Jesus will ask, where's your faith? Your faith has made you well. Where's your faith? Things like that. So faith is critical. That makes faith the most indispensable, you know, uh, 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 thing that we have as believers in our spirituality. And, and when we read the book of Romans chapter 4, verse number 17, the Bible says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Jesus speaking to the father of faith, whose name is Abraham. Abraham was made a father of many nations now god says as it is written i've made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed god who gives life to the dead and god who calls those things which do not exist as though they did that is the nature of god our father that is the nature of the god that we serve god Cause those things be not as though they are. You see, that is the language of God. That's how God is. God calls things be not as though they are. You remember when God stood over the cosmos, the Bible says there was chaos and the Spirit of God brooded or the Spirit of God hovered over, over the chaos and over the confusion. And the Bible says over nothing God spoke and God said, let there be light. The light was not, but the light was after God spoke. So this is the language of God. God is the God of faith. God is the God of faith. That's why Jesus says in the book of Mark chapter 11 have the God kind of faith or have the faith of God because God is the God of faith. The Bible says God who gives life to the dead and God who calls those things be not as though they are. He calls those things which are not as though they are. He calls those things which are not as though they are. They are. That is nothing but faith. Faith is calling things that that do not exist as though they do exist. So, so faith is the language of God and faith is the language that God understands and faith is the language that God uses to communicate with us even in the relationship that we have with him. We can only deal with God successfully if we come to him in faith, if we do everything with him by, you know, and, and being governed by faith. That's why the Bible says we must walk by faith. That's the book of 1 Corinthians 5, 7. We need to walk by faith. We need to walk by faith on a daily basis basis you don't have faith days and you have non-faith days no 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 faith should be part of our lifestyle the bible says the just shall live by faith so faith has to be our lifestyle the lifestyle we adopt when we pray we pray in faith when we go to God, we go to God in faith. You know, when we make requests and petitions to God, we do so in faith. When we make declarations, we declare in faith. You know, when, when we say we believe God for something, we are in faith. When, when, when you are not in faith, the Bible says you are in sin. Anything without faith is sin. No matter how earnest and no matter how dedicated and how religiously you can do that thing. It's, it's like a child of God who prays every day. But if your prayer is not mixed with faith, 
then that prayer you know amounts to nothing so faith is critical faith is the essence of our spirituality especially in these last days so we need to be people of faith and we need to live by faith and we need to walk by faith so I challenge you child of God even when fear confronts you you need to walk by faith even when fear confronts you you need to live by faith adopt faith as your new normal adopt faith as your lifestyle you know faith must be intact in you and within you as a child of God refuse to do anything you know without faith you must be a person of faith stop speaking stop you need to have you need to have faith in your prayers you need to have an attitude of faith in all that to do you need to have faith the bible says those who believe in the lord god shall be saved those who believe in the lord god shall be saved and i want to challenge you today but as I want to encourage you. You may not want Jesus. You may not have interest in Jesus, but you need Jesus Christ. Jesus is one of our basic needs. We cannot do anything and we cannot go anywhere. We are nothing without Christ. I want to I want to invite you today before I pray. I want to invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to invite you, my friend. I want to invite you. The Bible says to every man, it has been a portion. It has been, God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. Now, no caller, Uma caller, Ungamangela, Jesu Christum, Abin Kos, Nom Sumtati, Jeng and Kos, Nom Sindhi Swempiloyako. I want to pray for someone there who says, Men of God, I want to receive Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Nifunuk Tule Pirunyami, Nifunuk Tule Kain Lami. I want to lead you to Christ Jesus today. I want to pray for you, even as you prepare your heart to accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. My Father, I thank you for 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 Lo Unlalele Kaya, Lo Unlalele, wherever they are, those that Father wants to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I pray for them, O oh God. Those that are listening to the word of the Lord, I pray, Father, Utebisile Zunlako, Isanta Zakongosu Jesus, Savulegile Spabanueli, Ogoti Zamugele, Abafunungena, Eka Menila Christu Jesus, here are your people, O oh God, who wants to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Father, touch them. Father, change their lives. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I pray that to touch their hearts. Say these words after me. It in Gosu Jesu, Yawa Mugela, Ogutu Gen and Kizu and Yami, Yawa Mugela, Ogutu Ben Gosu, Nom Sindisim, Wimpilo Yami, Gosu Jesu, Tati Tati Kizu Yami, Bose Kizu and Yami, Gosu Jesu, Nigazu Tula, Gosu Jesu, Yawa Mugela, Ube Ube Pilo, Empilo Yami, Eka Menega Christo Jesu, Yawa Mugela, Ogutu Ben Gosu, Ogutu Bom Sindisi, Empilo Yami, Yabong and Gosu Jesu, Ogutu Nam Sanje, Sing Sindisiwe, Sing in Dona. That's what happens. Si fuma umlo mo etu pela. Si kolo ngi krisio. Si mamgelu Jesus Christo. Abe ngos nom sedisi. God bless you. I believe that you are saved. I pray that you may walk in the newness of life. I pray. Ogu tu be no hambo luche. Ube no hambo luche. No kolo kolo. Mia kamlega Christo Jesus. I pray for everyone that was listening. I pray the strength of God over your life. I pray the grace of God over your life. I pray the peace of God over your life. And I pray that you experience God. That you may encounter God in the way we have never encountered him before in this whole week may the lord bless you may the lord transform your life continuously i pray in jesus mighty name amen